When you think of al pastor, you probably think of those delicious cuts of pork shoulder on a beautiful big trompo turning with pineapple on top. It's glistening, it's fatty. It is an all time top tier dish in my opinion. What if I told you we could take that same marinade that makes that pork so delicious and beautiful and turn it into something that's easier to utilize as a home cook. These two recipes are shortcuts to the al pastor flavor you crave. And one of them is just weird enough you may not see it coming. Here's how to make it. To start, we're gonna make the deep red marinade synonymous with legit al pastor. To do so, bring a pot of water to a simmer. This is like 1.5 liters. It doesn't really matter the amount. Add in six guajillo chilies with the seeds and stems removed, two ancho chilies with the seeds and stems removed, and two arbols also with the seeds and stems removed. To round this out, add a quarter of a white onion, four cloves of garlic, a bay leaf, and we can get this covered and let it sit for around 10 minutes or so. Just turn the heat down to low so it's not like boiling aggressively. Here's a quick rundown on achiote paste, an ingredient you may not be super familiar with. It's made from annatto seeds, which are these little red seeds that look like almost mini chocolate chips. And it's an ingredient used for food coloring, flavoring, dyes, lots of things. It's native to the Yucatan Peninsula. In my opinion, there are three pillars to the al pastor flavor. One is pineapple juice, that little bit of sweetness. One is chilies, that heat and earthiness. And then the third is achiote, which is tart and pretty bright. This is gonna sound weird, but almost like tart candy type flavors. Even just smelling the box, this smells like a pickle. It's got that sort of tart acidity. This is not something you'd wanna use on its own. It's something that you'd wanna to add to marinades. You wouldn't wanna just cover something in liquid smoke. You would wanna dilute it with something. This is similar to that. It's a really, really good product. I think it is imperative to the flavor of Al Pastor. It's available in Mexican supermarkets. It should be available online. I can link to some on Amazon too if you just wanna buy it that way. But it is very, very important to the coloring, to the flavoring of good Al Pastor. The thyme is gonna soften the chilies and the veggies and allow us to blend them into a smooth paste. After the 10 minutes, everything should be nice and soft. Our chilies, our onions are ready to go. And we can transfer this to a blender. Set aside the bay leaf here. Don't add that to the blender. Add in a small can of pineapple juice, the achiote paste, salt, oregano, cumin, and a splash of white vinegar. To get mine going properly, I'll add a little clean water just to make sure that it blends nicely. You could strain this if your blender struggles to get a really smooth mix, but I actually like to leave everything in there. I think it's more flavorful that way. It's chili forward, it's pineapple forward, it's like a little bit tangy from the achiote paste. That gives it that really bright red color without using food coloring. It gives it a little bit of flavor too. It's kind of acidic and gives a really, really nice like tart puckering, delicious flavor that you're gonna want in an al pastor. Especially with any kind of fatty meat, the tartness from the achete paste is a really, really nice thing to have. Quick note, this makes about a pint of marinade, which is more than you're gonna need for like any normal dinner. What you can do is freeze it and then you've got some ready to go anytime you wanna prepare any of these. This first recipe can easily go from the freezer to the table in like 15 minutes. Once you've got the marinade prepped, it's pretty much ready to go. I first saw this technique from a YouTuber I really, really loved named Arnie Tex. He just does an amazing job covering Tex-Mex and Mexican food. And if you like any of the Tex-Mex stuff I've made on this channel, you're gonna love his stuff. I don't know if he invented this technique, but he's the first person I saw do it. So I just wanna give him a shout out. I'm gonna link to his channel in the description. So go show him some love. All you really need to make this work is a package of ground protein and the marinade. From there, you've got a sick al pastor ready to put in tacos or in bowls or quesadillas, however you wanna make it. In a skillet over medium high heat, get a little oil in there and then drop in the protein of choice. I really like ground chicken because it's lean and it's cheap. Put this in a layer in the oil and let it sit on that first side to get brown. Don't add any salt until you start seeing some browning taking place because it tends to draw out the water and then you get boiling rather than browning. Any kind of ground meat, you're just gonna get a little bit of water that leaches out anyways. It just happens. It's kind of part of the process. Continue cooking it until it's good and browned on at least some of the sides and just keep breaking it up. Season this heavily with salt and then spoon on enough marinade to cover the meat, knowing that we wanna cook this down a little bit until it's slightly thicker and a little bit charred. Even though the chicken is lean, the juiciness from the marinade is gonna go a long way to bring moisture. These aren't gonna eat dry. Once this is reduced and a little bit darker, be sure to taste it one last time for salt levels. If it's good, you're ready to serve this up however you'd like. I've got some store-bought tortillas, some store-bought salsa, a little pineapple and onion, and for a very small amount of work, you get an insanely delicious product. The marinade itself got so much love that you really don't have to provide that much love to the rest of the ingredients. This is just packaged ground chicken and salt, and then you add that marinade and suddenly it's like a totally different magical thing.
If we just change the protein in this, we can end up with a glorious fish taco that is tangy, fatty, and just as craveable as any pork al pastor would be. I live in Seattle, which is arguably a fish town, and experimenting with different proteins led me to this salmon al pastor that is outrageously delicious. Like honestly, one of my favorite things to cook now. For the salmon itself, I find it helpful to look for the fattier pieces of salmon rather than the more lean, deeply colored ones. You should be able to see ribbons of fat in the salmon rather than just like that deep orange kind of lean looking piece. This is a piece that's about one pound and lucky for me, it's boneless and skinless already. I'll cut these down into roughly one inch cubes and there's no need to be exact here, but just know that the pieces are gonna shrink a little bit while cooking. With any piece of salmon, that side that tapers off is like the belly area and usually it's much more fatty. So what I like to do is just slice it into larger pieces and in the oven, they are gonna get much darker and sort of start to resemble that like outside layer of the pork al pastor. It turns out really, really delicious. You get this almost contrast of really charred salmon versus the tender, larger chunks. So just keep that in mind when you're breaking this down. Place these in a bowl and top these with the marinade that we made earlier. You just need a couple spoonfuls of this. This also needs about 10 to 20 grams of cooking oil just to keep the whole thing juicy and delicious. The salmon doesn't have enough fat in it to really crisp up the outer layers of the marinade and the marinade has no oil in it, so you need a little bit here. As I mentioned, the nice thing about this is it needs way less time for the marinade to soak in. About an hour in the fridge is perfect. Cover this and let the marinade do its thing. We're gonna use this hour to make a tomatillo salsa that in this case, I would argue is a non-negotiable. The spicy brightness is gonna be a nice counterpoint to the earthy marinade and helps this turn into a little bit more of a complete dish. For the salsa, tomatillos are gonna be the base for their really sharp acidity. These need to be husked and washed to remove the sticky outer layer. Might as well wash some jalapenos and serranos while we're at it. Remove the tops from the peppers and then remove the seeds and place them onto a sheet tray along with the tomatillos, half a white onion, and a couple of cloves of garlic. I forgot to put those in right at the start, but it's okay because you can throw them in halfway. Roast these on the tray under the broiler until they're deeply charred. Move them around just to make sure that nothing burns, and it's gonna take a few turns in the oven to get even charring. Although I used half a white onion, I only ended up needing one quarter of it for the actual salsa itself. So what you can do is just dice the other one and use it as a topping on your taco. Remove them from the oven once they're nice and charred and let them cool. See all of this charring right here, that is what we're looking for. This charring means delicious smoky flavor. It's a very, very good thing. Add these to a food processor and blend until smunky. That's that kind of smooth, chunky texture that's really, really delicious in a lot of salsas. Let this cool and store it in the fridge for whenever you need a spicy, bright little something. Okay, we're now ready to get our salmon into the oven. Place your oven rack in the middle top position and begin heating it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna broil the fish but it's nice to have the oven hot for a more even cook. To prep the tray itself, carve up half a pineapple into bite-sized chunks. To do this, remove the top and bottom and then shave off the outer layer of pineapple using a sharp knife. You don't wanna dig in too far and lose too much of the flesh, but you also wanna remove as many of the spikes that you can. Cut this in half down the middle and then cut those in half as well. These quarters make it really easy to remove the core. So just slice out that little bit of core in the middle. From there, simply slice these sections into thin pieces. Place these onto the sheet tray and then plop a wire rack on top for our salmon pieces to sit on. Give each piece a little bit of room to make sure that the marinade can tack up on all sides. Change your oven to low broil and place this whole sheet tray pineapple apparatus onto the rack. This is gonna get you those nicely softened and warm pineapple pieces that you're used to getting from a good trompo. This whole thing under the broiler needs like five to eight minutes for the charring of the marinade to take place. The pieces of salmon are small enough that they're definitely gonna be flaky and tender on the inside by the time the marinade is charred. Once you see the marinade turn to this deeper, more brick color, there's a little bit of charring, and the salmon pieces are flaky, you can remove this from the oven. Sprinkle a little bit of salt on the salmon. It's gonna need a little bit of help just to bring that little bit of extra flavor for those fatty pieces. And then prep any accoutrements for what you're serving it with. For me, this is gonna be a couple of tortillas, some finely diced white onion, those broiled pineapples, and the salsa that we made. This is one insane fish taco, and totally worth the hour it takes for the salmon to become one with the earthy, acidic marinade. I'm using tacos as my preferred apparatus to eating these, but I want you to think of the possibilities of this in a salad, in a bowl, on a plate on its own. Like there are just so many good ways to eat this delicious fish and it gives you all of the flavors of al pastor that you want. Let me know any other ideas you've got for a marinade like this, because I've got a lot of it left in my freezer and I'm gonna be playing around with it for a while. Massive shout out to the amazing people supporting me directly on Patreon through patreon.com slash Cameron Marty. They get some cool benefits for supporting the channel and I get to keep the lights on. If you really enjoy this type of content, go ahead and subscribe. For another recipe you should absolutely check out, here's a torta video that just hits every flavor note. It's probably one of the best sandwiches I've ever eaten. Definitely one of the best things I've ever made. Thanks again for watching, cheers.